sharing your evening with us. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about um, what to expect when you apply for a loan. Um, Tiffany is my assistant here tonight, and I'm Linda, for those of you that don't know me. For a couple more people from here. Okay. We're just going to kind of hit on the, the basics of when you apply for a loan, um, kind of your options. Of course, we offer new and used vehicle loans, RV, meaning, you know, boats, um, recreational vehicles, campers, all of those kind of fall in that same category. Um, they're secured by something. Uh, personal loans and revolving lines of credit, credit cards, share or CD secured loans, real estate and home equity loans, and lines of credit. So that's kind of the scope of every of all the different products that we do offer here at the credit union um, that you may apply for. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about how interest works and basically we offer a fixed rate um, product. Um, that's on our, our vehicles, um, the mortgages, the personal loans, the share secured type loans, those are all going to be a fixed rate. Um, then we also offer a variable rate which is your revolving lines of credit, your credit cards, your home equity line of credit. Um, kind of the difference, to explain that a little bit as far as a fixed rate, you come in and get a loan, the rate today is at 4%, that's going to be fixed for a three year term, it's not going to ever change. So your payment's going to stay the same, your rate's going to stay the same through the term of the loan. When you talk about a variable rate, um, that is tied to prime, which currently the prime is 3.25%. So depending upon your credit score, the variable rate above or below that prime rate could um, tell you then what your rate's going to be. And if the Fed should decide to change the prime rate, then your loan rate basically would either go up or down according to what prime um, does. It's been at 3.25 for over a year now and the Fed is talking about not making any changes in the near future either. So, um, you know, right now the variable rate products are, are pretty good rates. A couple chairs over here. And it financed a $20,000 loan, the loan term at 60 months, 4.5% is the fixed rate. Um, the total finance charges that you would pay on that loan and then what your monthly payment would be. So, in total, um, they're adding the rate would, or the total amount that you would pay would be the $22,371.06 for that loan if it runs the full maturity. Um, they are simple interest loans, which means um, you pay interest for the balance on the loan from date of payment, last payment to the next payment. So anytime you come in and make a payment on your loan, the um, member service rep is going to take your payment. They're going to apply it first to um, interest if there's any interest owing, and then the balance is applied to principal. So if you want to pay extra principal, you can do that. Um, you know, your scheduled payment is 372, and you want to pay 400. It would pay the interest that would do be due, and then the rest would go against the principal. So three other three. I can't say that word tonight. So then your um, total interest that you would pay would actually be less because you're paying it off sooner, you're paying bigger payments, so you would be safe there. And another way to pay less interest would be is if you were to, you know, a lot of people just come in and they pay one time a month, but if you set it up so that it's tied to like your payroll that comes in twice a month and you're paying on it twice a month, that also um, cuts down on the amount of interest that you end up having to pay. Because you're average, paying, you're reducing the average daily balance is how it's coming. Right. Right. Um, on the variable rate, I just kind of gave you a scenario to kind of show, you know, if rates would adjust. Um, you know, you're starting out at the 20,000 five-year term again, the rate, the monthly payment. Um, but if rates would change, um, you know, like 12 months down the road, that the variable rate went up by one percent, and so now your rate is five and a half percent, your payment would increase to 380.29 for that for that remaining 48 month term. Um, just to give you an idea, you know, you're talking you know, seven, eight bucks a month different, the payment could potentially increase. So you do kind of need to keep that in mind when you look at the variable rate products to see 
you know, if rates do go up, is that still going to be in my budget what I'm comfortable with paying each month? So um, just kind of an idea, idea there. And then, um, again, if it would go up another, up to 6.5%, what you'd be looking at for payments. So any questions on kind of the difference between the fixed rate and the variable rate? Okay. Um, when you apply for a loan, um, obviously your probably your quickest um, method is to go to our website and apply online. Um, we also have our rates posted out there so you can look at the rates and the different products that we offer through the website. Or if you're more comfortable coming in and visiting face to face with a loan representative, you can do that. Or you, you know, if it, if you're not able to get into the credit union and you want to talk to somebody over the phone and, and have them fill out that application, that's still an option too. So there's lots of different ways um, to apply for a loan. Um, we do have staff that looks at the online applications throughout the day, hopefully um, that they would be able to, someone would get back to you that same day. Um, that's kind of our goal, to be able to get to a response that same day, but certainly by the next day you should have an answer. Um, as far as your request or if there's more questions and clarification that needs to happen. Um, that should happen relatively quickly for you. Um, once an application comes in, um, basically some of the things that we need to look at, we need to know the purpose of the loan, um, if there's going to be collateral pledged or security um, that we can utilize to secure the loan. Um, as far as your financial information, accounts, um, other credit that you might have, um, you know, your employment, your income, um, kind of look, we look at those, you know, to make sure they're in line with the position that you're in, that type of thing. Um, we look at your other debts that you have, what you owe elsewhere, um, what you might have for assets, and then um, references um, if we should need to contact you down the road or for, um, just a, a reference, we need to have that information as well. Um, kind of verifying the application, that's pretty similar to what I mentioned just a little bit before, but to make sure we have all the information that we need. Um, when you do apply online, we're still working on a little glitch where it doesn't always carry over all the joint applicants information, so we need, may need to contact you to say, okay, I see you listed a joint applicant here. Um, you know, we need to get the information as far as the employment, um, that sort of thing, and income, and those kinds of things, if it's missing anything um, when it comes in. Um, the supporting document, uh, applicant's ability to contract, you do need to be 18 um, to contract, or else if it's in the event of a child that's under 18, someone that is at least 18 to enter into that contract. So um, we, that is a requirement for um, lending. Um, support documentation, uh, oftentimes we need um, a copy of the title or a copy of the purchase agreement from the dealer, um, letting us know what you're purchasing, kind of what the price is, that sort of thing, um, to support the application that you're requesting. And quite often if somebody is self-employed, then we require proof of taxes from the last two years. Just to verify that, that income there. Um, Again, verifying the liabilities, what it shows on the credit report, um, you know, probably following up, you know, we're seeing this on the credit report, is that still an open account, you know, those types of things, um, and just any of the other general information that is on an application um, that we, we need to verify or document. Um, I, the five C's of lending has been around a really long time. I'm probably aging myself a little bit here, but when I first started in lending, um, you know, that was kind of the core of learning the whole lending process. Um, the five C's of lending, of course, character, capacity, collateral, capital, and conditions. Um, and we'll just go through that a little bit um, to talk about each one. It's not on the screen, sorry. <laughs> So the first thing we're going to talk a little bit about is, is um, the character. And some of the things that go with the character um, is, you know, how long have you been on the job? Um, you know, is it the same line of work, just a different company? Um, how long have you lived at your current address? Do you rent? Do you own? Those kinds of things. Um, 
you know, your personal references as far as who you're listing. Um, if it's your parents that live in town or someone that lives in Timbuktu, you know, just some of those kinds of things. And then, of course, the past experience that you've had with the credit union. Um, we really like to specialize in individualized lending. When someone applies for a loan, um, we look at every application, go through it. You know, we go in with the mindset, how can we make this loan? That's what we want to do. We want to make the loan. And so if you've had your account with the credit union for a long time, if you've always paid us, um, all of those things factor into the character. We've, we've had a good working relationship. If we've had some um, a late payment or something, if you've been in communication with the credit union, all of those things come into play when we talk about character, um, how you've treated uh, you know, your accounts with us thus far. Um, capacity, of course, that would be, um, you know, can you really afford this payment? You want to go out and buy a $30,000 vehicle and based on your income, your other expenses that you have, can you really afford this vehicle? We want to be financial counselors. We want to be able to say, um, you know, this might be a little bit too much of a vehicle for you. You know, we're looking at what you have for your house payment, what you have for um, credit card payments, what you have for child care, all of those things we want to factor in. And we want to make sure that we're not going to put a, bur put a burden on you by over extending credit to you either because then nobody wins. If you can't make your payments, we don't want you to be in that situation. So that's why we try to um, look at your capacity to make those payments. Um, generally, um, you know, we try to keep the, the guidelines as far as the debts to the income, what you're paying each month, um, you know, between that 40, 50 percent um, maximum. But you also need to look at um, what you call residual income, meaning that, you know, if you make $5,000 a month and your debt ratio is 40 percent, that's still a lot leaves you a lot of extra money to buy your groceries, to pay your utilities, those kinds of things, because those aren't typically factored into your debt ratio because they're not reported on the credit bureau. Only your, like your installment loans, your um, revolving lines of credit are actually on your credit bureau report. So it's different than if you make, you know, $2,000 a month and your debt ratio is 40%. That only leaves you, that leaves you a much smaller portion um, to pay the rest of your obligations. So that's a part of the factor too in the capacity. Um, the next thing, of course, is the collateral, which um, probably the first two are the most important factors. Um, you know, we, we don't want to repossess collateral, but at certain s instances we have to do that. Um, that's really kind of the last resort. I mean, really, when we are underwriting a loan, when we're doing a loan, we want to make sure, um, you know, that you have the capacity to pay and that your history with us has been good. Not to say some things, I mean, life happens sometimes and some things can, can go awry, but generally, you know, collateral is kind of the backup after we look at those other two things. So, um, basically, we look at the value of a collateral what the depreciation might be on that collateral, um, that the term that you're looking for is going to coincide to keep the value in line. You know, we don't want to loan um, $10,000 on a vehicle and two years down the road, you know, we've set your payment so small that now you still owe $9,000, you want to trade it in, they're only going to give you $7,000 for it. We don't want to put you in that position either. So. Um, that's why we look at the collateral and the term and, and try to um, make it work for both parties involved. Um, of course, it, if you're buying from a private party, um, we need a copy of the title to make sure there aren't any other liens so we can get a clear title and, and put our lien on it. And then also we require full coverage insurance. So if the vehicle's totaled or something like that, um, that you know it's going to cover the amount that you owe on your um, vehicle potentially. And when there is collateral involved and there is insurance that's required, the deductible that we require that you have on your insurance is based on your credit score.
So if you have a good credit score that's say 680 or higher, then you can have a thousand dollar deductible. But if you're having a credit score that's below 680, then we do require a five hundred dollar deductible for your insurance. And you can choose your insurance company. I mean, we don't. That is, you know, your your choice of where you purchase that. And next we have the capital. And basically, what that looks at is what kind of um, things do you own free and clear or you're buying a home and and you have you know 60 percent equity in your home those are, are good things um, you have a vehicle that's bought and paid for and now you're looking at upgrading a different vehicle those kinds of things um, generally if you're going to trade in you know you've got some equity in that vehicle so um, you're not going to need to borrow as much when you need to get a loan on the vehicle so um, that's kind of where that capital comes into play Conditions is always kind of a difficult one necessarily to, to place your finger on, but you know, right now what we kind of are thinking about, if you will, as those gas prices keep going up, you know, are people now going to want to trade in their uh, four-wheel drive F350 or whatever to get something a little more economical? Um, and that's kind of what we talk about when it comes to um, conditions. You know, what what are the economics in, in this area or if we're saturated to a certain company that is experiencing layoffs or um, just kind of the, the Sioux Falls market is really pretty good. We're pretty fortunate. You know, you hear um, the state is trying to um, bring in recruiters to get more people to come to South Dakota and work because there's more jobs than there are people to fill those jobs in different areas. So. That's kind of the conditions, you know, some of those big cities um, have huge amounts of unemployment, those types of things. So we feel pretty fortunate here in, the, in this area that um, the conditions aren't a huge factor, right, especially right now. So one of the conditions I think we probably see the most would be, as Linda had referenced, when the gas prices go up and then people kind of go into a panic and they want to get rid of their gas filters and get these more economical vehicles. And so they take them in and they end up having all this negative equity from this vehicle because the value has tanked now um, and they want to roll it over into this other vehicle. Well, you know, that's where we have to take the step and kind of educate them on, um, you know, that's probably not the best idea. I know you would like to get into something more economical, but for the amount of loss that you're taking on this vehicle, how much gas is that going to buy you? You know, can you really afford to, to do this? You know, we can we can work with some negative equity, but we we can't absorb it all. So that's one of the things that I, I think we see a lot of. As the the roller coaster of, of big to small, and we get into South Dakota winter and and 15 inches of snow, and people are like, "Why did I get rid of that four wheel drive? I need that now." So um, you know, it it comes and goes and goes around, I guess. Um, kind of. Um, as far as uh, credit guidance systems, we obtain a credit report. Um, you know, we're going to review the credit profile and the credit score. Um, as Tiffany talked about a little bit earlier, the different, um, depending upon your credit score, that is going to determine your rate that you'll get on a loan. Um, our rates are on our website uh, that you can view. But for a credit score 750 or above, um, that's where you're going to get your best rates. Then we have, that's the four star, then we have a three star, then we have a two star, and then we have a one star. So, um, you know, again, we, we do individualized lending based on your credit score, based on the term, based on the vehicle, all of those things um, are all taken into consideration um, when we review your credit report. Um, we actually use um, Equifax is who we pull our credit reports. Um, you can always get a free credit report. Um, at the annualcreditreport.com there at the bottom, but we do our reporting to Equifax and that's who we pull credit bureaus on. Um, there's also Experian and TransUnion. Um, typically, uh, mortgage reports, if, you, if you're getting a mortgage loan, they, re, they pull all three and take an average, I believe, um, if you're doing it like a first time home or, or mortgage loan, first mortgage loan. Um, we actually pull ours from Equifax. Um, and another thing to keep in mind with the credit scores, we use the credit score to determine what interest rate you qualify for. It's not the determining factor of whether you're going to get that loan or not. Right. right. So um, 
we actually are required when you do apply for a loan and, and a loan is granted, um, we need to give you um, your credit score and give you the option to um, go to the um, credit report and get a copy of the complete report. Because we're not a credit reporting agency, we can't give you a full-blown copy of your credit report. Um, you have to be a credit reporting agency, but this gives you an option to get that full report. Um, we can tell you what your score is. If, if there's some things on your report, you say, well, I don't owe that anymore, that type of thing. You know, we can discuss the report and, and so forth with you, but we can't give you a full-blown copy of it. And the annualcreditreport.com, um, you can view the reports from all the reporting agencies, but they just don't have the scores. They're free to get the report, but to actually get the credit scores off of them, then they do charge you for those. Um, and generally, um, when we pull our credit report to, um, we usually, if you apply online, it's pretty much automatically going to pull the report. When we get it, it's already pulled the report and we can review the information. Um, if you've had a report done in the last six months, um, typically at that point then it wouldn't pull it. But otherwise, if you um, apply online, it will automatically, that's part of the application process, you're uh, you know, basically consenting to have a credit report. And one of the things that we do that some places don't is when you do apply, when you've got that credit report on file, say you come in couple months down the road and you need some more money, um, we don't just pull another credit check on you. If we can use that last bureau in there, um, we will use it, you know, in order to save another hard pull on your, on your credit score. There's so much to be said about credit scores. There's so many different factors that figure in and, and you couldn't really even begin to guess, you know, why your score is this or why it's that. I mean, there's just a ton of factors. Um, one of the things that I can tell you, I think that that probably gives you the biggest boost in a credit score is when you do have a mortgage loan. Well, that seems to be um, pretty pretty good points for that. And then um, you know you have a number of revolving accounts. It's important um, if you have some credit cards. You know you can sure you can sure use three or four credit um, cards if you have those. But it's important to not to have the balance right up to the limits because that does um, lower your credit score um, on a credit report um, when the balance and the limits are really close to. So um, it isn't necessarily that you have a lot of um, credit, but it just depends upon where your limits are and, and your balances. Um, the credit scores can range from uh, a low uh, 300s up into uh, to eight, like 818 is the highest um, that a credit score through Equifax, basically that's the range that, that we can see. So after we've reviewed um, the credit bureau, the collateral, all of those kinds of things, um, we're going to make a decision on that loan application. Um, it's going to be approved just like you requested, 20,000, you want a five year term, this is the collateral, so forth. Um, so basically that would be an approval. Um, your next um, option possibly would be that we aren't um, able to approve the loan without a qualified cosigner. Um, if you don't have enough credit, if your credit is a little bit too colorful, um, we may need to have a qualified cosigner, someone that's got a, a better track record of on time payments, basically. Um, counter offer, that's where we can approve your loan request under certain conditions. Um, and, and there's kind of a gray area there between the co-signer and the counter-offer because sometimes, you know, we can do the loan, but we do need the co qualified co-signer. Or this particular vehicle, the value isn't sufficient. This is the amount that we can loan, not the full amount that you initially requested. Um, or we can't do a, a, a five-year loan on it. We could do a four-year loan. Those are kind of where the counter-offer um, comes into play. And then, unfortunately, sometimes loans have to be denied. I'll try to talk through um, the reasons and give you some insight on this is maybe what you could do to bring your credit score up a little bit or if you do this um, you know down the road this could help improve your credit so try to make positive suggestions on you know how maybe next time you could approve the loan if these things were in place so um, just a little counseling there as well. Um, some of the lending services that we offer, aside from 
or along with your um, loan then you would come in to get an installment loan on a vehicle particularly. Um, we offer a vehicle service contract. Um, basically it's, it's like the extended warranty that the dealers offer you. Um, we write through a company, um, Route 66 is who we utilize. Um, you can take your vehicle to any license repair facility um, and have the repairs done. You need to just need to call ahead, those kinds of things. But um, very good product, very reasonable, competitive price. Um, GAP, or Guaranteed Auto Protection, basically, um, in the scenario kind of that Tiffany talked about where you've got this pickup and now you want to downsize to a smaller car and, um, you know, you go to the dealership and, and you're not getting what you all wanted. Um, the GAP basically covers if you have a vehicle, it's totaled, um, the insurance company says we're going to pay you $8,000, you still owe $11,000. If you purchase that GAP coverage, which is $369 one-time fee, it would cover that GAP, so you would not owe the credit union any more money. And then it also gives you $1,000 towards the purchase of another vehicle. So um, very good product as well, very competitive, um, something also that the dealers probably would offer you. Um, credit life and credit disability, um, important factor um, to have that available. I mean, it's not mandatory, but we do offer it. Um, if you're sick or hurt, not able to work, do you have the savings set aside that you can make those monthly payments, or would it be a real strap um, to meet those obligations? That's where the disability insurance would be um, beneficial to have that coverage on your loan, so it would make your payments for you if you're off work for 14 days. Um, then it will, you know, start making those payments for you. Credit life again. If you would die, the loan would be. Full. Um, it's available as individual or joint, so if there's two people on the loan, both of you potentially um, could have the joint life insurance and um, then have the loan paid off. Auto insurance, we do have a licensed agent here in the credit union, um, Dakota fin Financial Services, um, offer independent insurance agents so they can offer a number of different companies look at which company might work best in your situation and give you um, a quote on that too at no obligation. The NADA appraisal guide, that's what we utilize to come up with a book value on a vehicle. You know, are you paying too much? Is it priced right? Those kinds of things. Um, it's actually available. There's a link on our website that you can go out there and look up um, the NADA guide on vehicles. If you're shopping over the weekend and kind of wonder what this vehicle's worth. Is the dealership selling it at a fair price or is it overpriced? Um, you can actually go to the website and look up the, the value of the car. Um, that comes up like in the, in the Midwest area because there are different areas that potentially can give you different prices to just kind of what's in, in our market there. And when we look at the APD guide, we loan up to is the clean retail that we include in the mileage and options. Um, not all places use the clean retail and not all the places can include all of the options, but we do. Yeah, we do finance up to 100% or more depending upon, um, you know, the purchase price. And then, you know, we can finance some, like the service contract, the gap, the credit life disability, those things can be financed in the wall too if necessary. <coughs> so basically once your loan is approved, you know, Approved, um, then you actually have to come up, come in to the credit union um, and sign the loan paperwork um, to set the contract um, up to date. So um, basically now we've uh, moved to electronic signatures. If you go to the um, member service area and take a cash withdrawal or a deposit or whatever and, and they ask you to sign, um, all the lenders now have those same signature pads in their offices so everything's um, signed electronically. Um, it makes it really nice um, to be able to, um, if you're at the North Branch one day at the Southwest Branch or whatever when the loan pays off and you want to get a copy of your, your loan documents or your husband works on one side of town, the wife on the other and you want to sign the loan papers the same day, you know, we can split that up so they can just bring up the paperwork, have you sign um, and be on your way. So um, basically, um, once we have the loan contract ready, you know, it's going to show you what the amount financed is, what the monthly payments are, the rate, the term, um, along with the collateral securing the loan. That will all show on your loan contract. 
Um, payment options, um, I know Tiffany talked a little bit about having um, the capability of making payments um, every two weeks to help pay the loan off quicker. Um, if you're bi-weekly pay, payroll um, and you want to just set that up so when your paycheck comes in you want half of the payment to come out, um, you actually make 26 payments during the year so you're getting an extra month. Um, um, but that's kind of the first option. The second option, um, you know, unfortunately if you don't have your checking account here, you have it at another financial institution, we can have you sign a form and pull that payment out of that other financial institution every month as well. Um, AFT or automatic funds transfer, um, they transfer from a savings or a share draft account on a specific date. Um, one thing about the AFT is once those are set up, um, they're going to come out irregardless if you come in and, and make an extra payment or not, it's still going to take that automatic funds transfer every single time. So um, just be aware of that. Payment coupons, if you choose to have your um, payments, um, want to send a coupon in, um, just more comfortable, easier for you to go through that stack of coupons or put them in your bills that you're going to pay that month or whatever, that's certainly an option as well. And then we do see a fair number of bill payment. You know, if you use the bill pay here, obviously you don't want to set it up to send to the credit union. You can just transfer it online. Um, but other financial institutions, if you have your checking account there, um, you know, either they'll, they'll send us a check to make the payment for you. Um, you want to make sure and kind of watch that to see um, what date your payments do and when your payments are received here at the credit union. Um, you know, we have come across some situations where um, you know, they may wait or just kind of their processing, it could take up to 8 to 10 days for the check to actually get to us. So if you, if you tell them you want to pay it on the 15th, um, it may not reach us, you know, by the 15th. So just watch those when they do post against your loan to make sure kind of you need to adjust that. Questions? <laughs> have any questions? There will be a session, Colin, which, when is the, kind of the mortgage? Um, That'll be next month, the second Tuesday of the month. Um, they'll go through a lot more mm -hmm. questions as far as the mortgage, the mortgage loans that we have available. But I, I really, you know, it's really simple to um, go to our website and look at the, um, <coughs> the application and the rates and, and there's just really a lot of information out there. Nobody has any questions? I was so um, thorough. I have a question. <laughs> when you factor in uh, required deduct deductible on your automobile, do you figure that on the primary or do you figure it out? Because we have it all loan together. Okay. Your credit is better than mine. The interest rate when it's a joint application we take whosever credit score is the highest. Okay, so. And that's the factor that we use for the interest rate as well as the insurance okay. requirements. And you said that above 680? 680 or above. Okay. You, you get the best, um, or you can have up to a thousand dollar deductible. I got you. Um, that is all tracked by an outside insurance company that we utilize to follow up to make sure, sure. Um, that the insurance but sure. That's triggered from basically your star level that we submit. I got you. Are you all familiar with the website? Did you want to take a look at the website? Okay. Okay. Speaking for everyone. <laughs> Any other questions? Easy crowd, huh? Anything else, Colin? Um, I get to touch on the rates, the rate promotions and things going no, on. No, right? that's one thing I was going to talk about. Yeah, right now we have a promotion um, that we're offering match a rate. So um, if you would have a loan at XYZ Company, um, you know we would match that rate. You could bring that to um, the credit union here, and then we would refinance it for the term that you have at the rate that you currently have. So. If you had a, a, let's just say, a Bank of the West and you were able to get a loan for 2.5%, um, you could bring that to the credit union 
and potentially um, get that same rate here for the remaining term in the moment chat. I'm assuming that's for fixed rate. It is fixed rate, yes. Okay. On on automobiles. The promotion. That goes through um, the end of April. Maybe some of the other factors that might, when we don't have the promotion like this going on, where are some of the other things that we can offer that uh, maybe will help get some of those rates a little bit lower? Well, the, um, we do on a rate sheet, you will see the green loan, which means any vehicle that gets 28 miles per gallon or better on the highway uh, classified as a green loan. So that's an automatic half discount um, off of the, basically the rate sheet. Um, also, if you're familiar with your lifetime points that you earn each month for the different um, accounts that you have, products and services that you utilize, you can cash those points in to further buy down your rate um, to get an even lower rate. Like for 5,000 points, you can reduce your rate a quarter percent. 15,000 points, it's a half percent. Um, and those are good, again, on the fixed rate products. I was curious about that because your website doesn't tell you what you can use your points for. It is out there. I haven't seen what you can use it for <laughs> on the web page. That would be fun to see if you could pull that up. Because I have like, I don't know, 8,000 points, which may not be a lot, but they're worth something. And I see where it says that you can go and look, but it essentially says, This, been there that link's been there for a while. This actually is a fairly new addition to the bottom portion of this PDF. So, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. from when you apply for a loan to actually be approved for the loan? Like what's that time frame typically? Um, it's not unusual for a member to come in my office and, and we'll go through the application. Um, it, the computer system is pretty uh, advanced that it's going to add up all your um, debts and, and look at your ad assets and, and look at your credit score, look at your um, debt to income and, you know, in, in 10 minutes give you an answer. Oh, okay. So it's, it is pretty quick. Points don't expire, do they? They do not. They don't expire, but for certain promotions, we may put in place, you know, a disclosure that states that you can only use up to so many, or maybe a points aren't applicable to that specific promotion. Which is the case in the promotion we're doing right now. <laughs> Thank you, Diane. Sorry. Anything else, Colin, that we didn't cover? Or did you oh, I think you touched on everything else I think one of the things um, you know we we do have you know good loan products we do have a lot of different um, options to try to work with members to make sure that you know it fits best for everyone um, you know the the boats and the recreational vehicles campers that's kind of the season we're into now and um, those are something that we definitely do and, and are looking to um, Pretty competitive rates in those. Is, I mean, all of our rates are, but those are those are good rates on, on those recreational vehicles, motorcycles. Um, kind of seeing it. And then in this warm weather, we we're seeing a lot of applications for motorcycles. Anything else? Thanks again so much for coming and we appreciate it. If you ever have any questions, 
you know, just get on the phone and give us a call and ask for, a, you know, someone in the loan department and we'll answer your questions or get your application filled out or whatever you need.